Sea of Thieves had their 2024 preview event on the 20th of March, and we got a good look at what's in store for the rest of the year. The headline features for season 12, 13 and 14 were revealed, and whilst season 13 has seemingly gathered the most excitement among the community, season 12 is close behind. Two new weapons will be added to our armory and three new tools to the sandbox, as well as additions to the game, namely zip lines and harpoon balancing. Now, the new weapons look great and we'll talk about them in a moment, but there are a few concerns I have regarding the effects these new tools and additions are going to have on solo players. Hello Pirates, my name is Ellie and I post regular Sea of Thieves videos on this channel. If you want to stay up to date with the game, then remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new video. I also stream on Twitch three or four nights a week. Head over to twitch.tv forward slash Elliboop and drop me a follow for notifications of when I go live. So the first of the new weapons is the double barrel flintlock. This new pistol will have two firing modes. You can fire two shots individually without needing to reload, or you can charge the shots together for one higher damage burst. The pistol is shorter range and has a faster fire rate than the current flintlock pistol we have. Two shots and a single sword swipe will get the kill, so it's also less powerful than the current flintlock pistol, which can double tap. Next up are throwing knives, which I think most people are very excited about. These can be used in three ways. You've got your standard stabbing motion, which doesn't do much damage. Then you've got a charged attack, which like the sword lunge will slow your movement, but deal high damage. And then you can flip the knives over and throw them at enemies. If you miss, you'll be able to retrieve your knife from the geometry around the world and it will refill your ammo. Rare also mentioned the possibilities of a player throwing a knife at you, missing, and you then being able to pick that knife up and throw it back. I believe this means that those loose knives, like in this situation, can be wielded no matter what your weapon loadout is. So for example, if you're rocking sniper sword and then someone throws a knife at you, you should still be able to pick that knife up and chuck it back at them. Now comes the first of the new tools, which has me concerned for solo players. The Scattershot is a new type of cannonball, which is essentially a small cluster of four cannonballs. The range is shorter and the four cannonballs create a spread, damaging multiple things at once. Now, Rare have said that this is designed to eat up the resources of another crew, because although these holes are small tier one holes of damage, you will still need wood to repair them. Now, for equal sized crews or smaller crews against bigger crews, this is fine, and I think it will be a nice change to naval combat. However, my concern is that as a solo slooper, it's already pretty rough to manage your wheel damage, mast damage, and deck holes by yourself. If you consider a brig rocking up on a solo slooper and shooting scattershot for the first broadside, as a solo slooper, being left with potentially six points of damage immediately is going to be pretty rough. It's not been confirmed that these will do damage to masts or wheels though, so my hope is that they won't. Otherwise, this is essentially another buff to larger crews against solos. We'll have to see how it plays out, but I do have some concerns, mostly as a solo player, especially when you add in the next tool. The Bonecaller is probably one of the coolest things I've seen Rare add to the game since Blunderbombs and Firebombs. Essentially, it's a throwable item that spawns skeletons that are loyal to you. It looks like you get three skeletons per throwable, and not only will they fight alongside you against enemy players, they'll also fight against enemy AI. This means that you can use them on islands for a bit of fun, but also in naval combat situations against other crews. It also appears as though you can fire them out of cannons, much like the other throwables in the game. Now again, this is super cool and I really like the idea behind this new tool, however, as a solo slooper it is concerning that if every player gets one of these throwables and can literally spawn, what, 12 skellies on your ship at one time, if a galleon crew lands all their shots? Now don't get me wrong, it's unlikely that that will happen very often, if at all, I mean how often does a full broadside galleon actually use all their cannons, let alone land all their shots? However. I am concerned about the balance here. Hopefully they're not going to be as common as other throwables in the game. If they keep the rarity closer to that of cursed cannonballs, then I think things will be okay. I am excited to see how this one plays out. 
because I feel it could result in some pretty hilarious things happening on the seas, but the rarity will have to be right here otherwise it's just going to be too much PvE getting involved in PvP fights. Next up is the Windcaller, or the Horn of Fair Winds. This item is like a trident or the Ashen Wind Skull where you can find the item in the world and it'll have a finite charge meaning it will run out eventually. The Windcaller has several uses and this should make it a very interesting addition to the sandbox. So firstly, this item can blow wind into your sails and take you faster than full billow speeds. You can slow your fall if you jump from a great height, you can blow other players off land or their ships, and you can use it as a propulsion tool and essentially make a rowboat become a speedboat and even yeet yourself backwards in the water. You can even quickly put out fire on your ship with this item, so it really does have a lot of uses. However, again, I'm not sure about the balance of this item. Brigs, particularly, are already fast enough. Can you imagine a brig with a horn of fair winds? We would just never stand a chance against brigs in this sandbox unless something is done about the speed of the brig at base. Hopefully this will be addressed ahead of the release of this new tool because I really love the idea of it but I worry that it will make the bigger ships even more powerful, yet again leaving sloops in the dust. It's hard enough to catch a bigger ship as a sloop these days, adding this could make things a lot worse. Now this is something that was planned for the game since before it was even released. Finally, balancing on harpoon lines is going to be a thing we can do in-game. Essentially, you can use your harpoon to fire across to either an island or a ship and then press a button to climb onto the line and walk across it. It'll be a little balancing game to get across, but it does look like you'll be able to take treasure and other items across with you, so it'll definitely make for some fun and interesting boarding tactics. It's also been confirmed on Twitter that you will be able to break these harpoon lines the same way you can now, so there will be a deterrent to boarding this way if you're quick enough to slash or shoot the harpoon line and make the players fall. Again, I love the idea of this, but it is going to be rough as a slooper getting harpooned by a brig with the Horn of Fair Winds yeeting up behind you and the entire crew charging across a harpoon line for an easy board. I'm sure I'm overreacting here, but it is a concern that I hope will be addressed in terms of the balancing of the ships. Solo play is hard enough, but all these new tools are essentially lowering the skill ceiling and it will make it harder for good solo players to defend against bigger crews. Now, we have seen these in the Monkey Island Tall Tales and Mike Chapman confirmed their addition to the adventure mode a while back, but finally, zip lines will be making their way into the main game. I can't wait to see these on islands and outposts and I think it will make traversing the bigger islands like Plunder Valley and Old Faithful much more fun. No complaints or concerns at all when it comes to these being added. So there you have it, that's the bulk of what's being added to the game in Season 12. We think that Season 12 will probably release around the same time that the game comes to PlayStation on April 30th, so not long to wait for a whole refresh to the combat meta and the sandbox. Now, sure, I have my concerns as a solo slooper and for smaller crews, and I think some of it comes from a place where, obviously, I personally solo a lot. However, we have to bear in mind that a lot of new players play solo, and so I'm thinking of the new PlayStation players who come into this game eager to play, but if these new tools aren't balanced well, or some changes aren't made to buff solo play a little more before these additions, I am concerned it's going to put players off. Now I know Sea of Thieves is designed to be played with friends, and it's long been referred to as hard mode if you choose to play solo. However, I do think these new additions will truly solidify that reference unless some changes are made to help solos on the seas. What do you think? Are you a solo player? Are you concerned about any of the changes coming? What are you most excited for about from Season 12? Let me know down in the comments. If you liked the video, then please do leave a like and subscribe for more Sea of Thieves content. Remember, I also stream on Twitch three or four nights a week, and I'm actually working on a goal of hitting 500 followers over there. If you could head over and drop me a follow, I would really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the seas.